Welcome to Canada Startup. And today we are going to talk about some dividend stocks for 2021. I will note we are not financial advisors and we are doing this strictly for financial information and education as opposed to telling people what to do. Hi, Bill. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks, Dave. And today we're talking about some dividend stocks. And uh, let's start off with a question. What uh, question might you have about dividend stocks? I know bits and pieces about them, but I, I'd really like to know more about, you know, how do you acquire them? Uh, you know, like, what's the best way to acquire them? What what to look for in a solid dividend stock? Um, those would be the most, you know, looking to buy. What's, what's the right type to buy? Um, is this something that I look long term, short term? Those are some of the things I'd like to know right. about. Well, let me give you just a little bit. First of all, if the company is profitable, they tend to be able to pay their dividend. There are companies that are what's called dividend aristocracy. These are companies that may have been paying for 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, is it guaranteed? No, uh, they do need to be profitable. They need to be able to pay the dividend. Some companies will borrow to pay you a dividend. And uh, so there would be considered a de varying degrees of risk when you look to invest in dividend stocks. Uh, we can look at dividend stock investing as a longer term investing to tap into a decent return, especially now where the banks in your deposit accounts, you might be getting 0% or half a percent or 1%. Some of these dividend stocks you can be getting uh, significantly higher. And that's what we're going to look at today is uh, three companies that I've just taken a look at. Um, I own a couple of them. It's just a way for me to have some cash flow coming from these stocks. And it's something that's fun. As an entrepreneur, uh, if you've got shareholders, maybe every year you pay out a little dividend, it's treated as income for people. And uh, again, let's have conversations about dividends because it's part of running a business, being an entrepreneur, and understanding the financial structure of a business. Yes. Does that answer most of your questions? Yes, yes, yes. We're on oh, a good path. If you buy a stock, and I guess the one that in Canada, they're considered very stable are the banks. And okay. so each of the banks, the main banks right now in Canada, they have dividend uh, programs, uh, paying dividends on a regular basis. There's something called, and you've asked it uh, about a drip. Uh, yes. Remember what a drip means? Dividend reinvestment plan. Exactly. And so there you can go. register with a, a company or you can register through your broker or your bank. And every quarter, instead of receiving the money, they'll buy the shares at whatever price that's relevant in the time and the market. That is a great, what I've, I've personally experienced, it's a great way to self invest and also to have investment over the long term. And you can really improve your financial situation over three, five, 10, 20, 30 years, if you're constantly reinvesting dividends. What what type of investor, like, you know, if you're looking beginner, intermediate, and pro, what level of in investor would you say, you know, would it be worthwhile uh, getting into the, the dividend reinvestment plan? I would be inviting any beginner to have one or two uh, investments in their portfolio that is dividend focused. Because what it does is it allows them to constantly get a, a, a return that can be either taken as cash or reinvested in, in the company. So it's one of the pillars of investing and long-term investing. So many funds, if you have a pension fund, if you have different types of, um, of funds to acquire wealth over long-term, they use dividends as a key pillar to build up long-term uh, accumulation of wealth. Yeah. So on these things, when do you have to take the cash out? Or well, do you? you don't. That's the thing right now. The way the government in Canada has set it up, if it's in your RSP or if it's in your TFSA, these dividends are paid to you without tax, which, again, is a nice benefit. It's an added benefit because in many ways you're getting 40 to 50 percent better because okay. you're getting it in a tax sheltered vehicle instead of having to pay tax on it. And so it can be quite uh, lucrative and quite a good way to have some uh, strategic investing, long-term investing, portfolio investing for an individual or for a company. That's what's happening right now in the marketplace too. Oh, cool. Because again, if you, if you have, if you're a business and you're running a large deposits, you can either keep it in the in the bank and be earning very little, 
or some people might actually own some underlying shares that they're getting. And that's what we're gonna look at. The first one we'll take a peek at today is we'll take a look at a bank. And so let's see if we can see that. Are you able to see that? Yes. And so what does it say to you? So I got Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. And it looks like the, is it cm.to? Correct. So that's the ticker symbol. Okay. Uh, if we were to go onto YouTube, uh, uh, Yahoo, uh, that has a little chart of their uh, progress this year. So we've gone in June, we were at $90 and right now we're at 111. And that's one of the key numbers I look at is the current price, which is 111.43. Right. I look at the range. I'm very interested in the range, 67 to 112. Okay. And if I shift over there, you got the four dividend in yield at 5.84 which is the dividend, and it works out to be 5.22%. Uh, and it's actually paying its dividend to people who are own the shares from December 24th. So if you own those shares, you're going to be getting a dividend of 5.22%. And that's a pretty darn good return, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And so that might surprise a lot of people today that this company, which has a, a solid earnings, a fairly low PE ratio, uh, capitalization of $49 billion is paying people 5.22% to own its stock. And so I like the Canadian banks as a dividend return. And uh, I'm encouraging people who, when they do make it and start taking their own portfolio to consider having a bank. Again, like we said, we're not advisors yet. We are sharing this for education purpose. Yeah. Any questions about the CIBC? I like I like CIBC. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> it's a lot better than putting it in your bank account, I guess. Well, that's the big thing is that you 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 could keep your money. Say say you had a hundred grand and you could keep it in a deposit account at CIBC and get what half a percent, or you could be owning CIBC shares for maybe a percentage of that, and you'd be getting a five point two two percent dividend for that. Yeah, that's cool. Is that pretty cool? I like that. So let's. Uh, Stop sharing the screen. So that's a little bit about a bank and, and inviting you even for 20 for the next year. Uh, let's maybe talk in, in further conversations of maybe shifting some of your resources into perhaps a bank share. That's, yeah, uh, no, that's very interesting. Might be a way to get some nice returns uh, for yourself in 2021. Yeah, I, I know we've talked before, about, you know, there's the different tiers of banks in Canada. Is it only the, the top tier that offers dividends or what levels offer dividends? Pretty much all banks. Uh, that's one of the things they, they do is all, all pretty much uh, Canadian banks offer offer a dividend. And, and yeah, if it's a little bit more risky, it, the dividend tends to be a, a little bit higher. And so it's one of the ways to rank your banks is which dividend is higher. Uh, a little bit higher risk might have to pay a little bit more in dividend. And the market will shift that around. If a bank has a problem, for instance, and people sell off the bank, uh, what we'll, we'll find out is the dividend may shift, the dividend rate might shift. So the next area that has really provided nice, attractive dividends, particularly to Canadians, are the pipelines. The pipelines. And so if we look at uh, the pipelines and we, we consider uh, one that is a pretty attractive return right now uh, for investors is a pipeline called Enbridge. Enbridge, and right? Enbridge as you're driving around and you see Enercare. Yeah. And uh, again, 41.23 is the price right now. We have a range of 33 to 57 pretty much in the range. Uh, if we look for the year to date, you can see it's been as high as 56 here, down to 37 and sitting right now at $41. But you see it's uh, people who own the shares as of February 11th, 2021. So if you wanted to get some by then, and can you see that that dividend is? It's uh, what, uh, what do you see there? I see what, 3.34? That's the dollar amount they're paying. Oh, on 8%, 8.04%. Correct. Can you believe wow. that? That there's a, a company that is, is pretty stable. Now, one of the things I like about dividend stocks too is you're not only getting the 8%. If throughout the year you decide to maybe pick some up at 33 and, and maybe even sell a little bit at 56, you can have a position where you're getting a nice return uh, from dividends, yet you also have an opportunity to do a little bit of buying and selling 
uh, around a core position that could give you a total yield um, north of 10%, which in investing terms, that's considered very good. Yes, definitely. definitely. So what, and, mm. when you own stocks, what, well, I'm just going to go some pace them. Say you only own two shares. Yes. Would they still pay a dividend on that? Yes. But what they'll do there, and they'll give you the cash. Now, if you own, say, 100 shares, and let's say if you own 100 shares, which in this case will be about $4,000, 8%, that's about $320. If you get the $320 back, if you click on saying you want to receive shares instead of the cash, they'll give you, in this case, about eight shares of Embridge stock. Oh, right on. So that would be the way the dividend reinvestment would work. And that's the way that your tax situation would work. And so that's either getting cash dividend or share dividend. Right on. And so it, it is a really wonderful way to uh, build up and accumulate uh, a nice portfolio over time. And then the last one I wanted to just bring in today is a little bit of a riskier form of dividends. Again, this is a dividend that it could be cut. It's a dividend that um, uh, pays higher because it's more risk. Mm -hmm. Yet this might surprise you because it surprised me when I was doing my research about uh, three months ago. Yeah. Is, let's take a look at one that's coming from the United States. It's a, it's a pipeline. It is one that's called MPLX. And if we scroll down, we have a six dollars and eighty seven cents to twenty seven dollars. You have a forward dividend of two seventy five, and look at that return. Wow, twelve point one six. Wow, correct. And so a lot of these uh, natural gas pipelines were quite volatile this past year. And some of them were cut because when they get to be about 15% or 20% and they can't pay, one of the things that they're forced to do is sell, uh, uh, cut their dividend. And when they cut their dividend, of course, you as an investor don't get what you were expecting. Yet that is what's been happening in this sector where it's had quite a, a volatile year. Yet for investors who do a little bit more research, that is a pretty nice return for what's considered to be a fairly stable investment. Now, someone say, how can it be stable if it goes from 6.87 to $27 in a year? Well, that is part of this type of investment is that when the oil and natural gas were having big challenges earlier uh, in 2020, uh, many of these pipelines were under a lot of pressure, a lot of selling pressure. A lot right. of selling. So any questions about this, uh, this whole sector for people, if you're interested, is to go and do a little research into the whole natural gas pipeline industry, particularly in the United States. Yeah, that one, that one to me, like the, the riskier thing, I guess that's where you come down to, there's a lot more of your own personal stuff. Like what, what criteria would you, would you want to look at as a, a rookie um, doing this sort of investment? Like is, because obviously one of the first things you want to say is, okay, I, I'm, I'm a rookie. How much risk do I want to be involved in? Um, well, and then from there, what other criteria would I look at? Well, that's a great question, Bill. And, and I, I guess even, someone who might have be very experienced in investing will still have to analyze the risk involved here. So when we look at Enbridge, if you look at the, the stability of their dividend, it's considered quite high. And if you go do some research, you'll find that Enbridge ranks very high in their ability and reliability to pay a dividend. Mm -hmm. uh, MLX in this case is rated quite high in the pool of natural gas pipelines. In okay. the and then a number that are even more risky, you find out if it's ranked and you'll go to a lot more risk. Uh, there's one that's very famous. It's called ET, which again, if someone wants to check, ET, Yahoo uh, Finance, its dividend got to be over 20%. Yet then as an investor, you say, well, what if they do cut their dividend in half? It still means they're going to be paying 
Yeah. So if you can get 10% and you're willing to take the risk, and it did happen because that's one of the things that I looked at this year and, mm -hmm. and I did make an investment in ET and I knew that my risk when I bought it at 17% dividend, it might go up to 20 and then they might cut it in half. So right now they're sitting at half. They, they basically weren't able to pay 20. They're paying 10. It's right. still very volatile. Yeah. I only put, I put what's called a half position. So it's okay. not a full position. I yeah. put a half in there because then I'm, looking at a capital appreciation and a good dividend. And so it's a little bit more of a, a riskier or risk taking investment. Yeah. So definitely if, if, if it was the money that you really, really need in the next five years, I'd probably suggest, or again, in education, mm -hmm. you can have risk in your portfolio, yet you want to be able to manage it. So perhaps let's go up the curve in uh, stability or credit worthiness. So we're not taking quite as much risk. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah, I guess if you look at the banks, if the banks go under, then we're all in a big problem. So uh, yes, the Canadian yeah. banks uh, we had last year, the American banks, uh, there, a number of them suspended their dividend. They, they stopped their buybacks. They've yeah. just recently uh, given the ability back to the banks to do buybacks, which is a big part of why banks tend to go up over the long term is that they're paying good dividends and they're also doing buybacks. So that was suspended last year. Okay. Just been reinstated in the States. So uh, looking at investing in the U.S. banks right now is quite interesting. They've got some nice dividends, yet not quite as attractive uh, from a dividend perspective as the Canadian banks. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Something, yeah. something to explore for every investor right now, because one of the things that I, I believe that you and I have been exploring is that as a, as a business person to understand the different types of financing, to understand the different ways to create cash flow for you or your enterprise is all part about the financial literacy and also the opportunities in the financial markets. Yes, definitely. So with that, do you have any last questions as we bring uh, this session to a close? I really appreciate your time and your, your questions and uh, the opportunity to have a, a chat in, on behalf of the, the guests that we have at Canada Startup, the business skills with the Brampton uh, meetup. Uh, any other questions that you might want to bring um, up? To the table? I, I, this is probably a topic for another week or anything, but we've mentioned about putting it into your, you know, doing a um, your own investments through your RSPs and your TFSA. Uh, that would be something I'd like to understand a bit more. I, I don't think it's just a question to be answered now. Maybe we could talk about that later, but just to get a better handle it. If if someone does want to uh, start purchasing their own stocks and setting up their own, you know, drip uh, plan, that sort of thing, um, you know, what would be the best route or the what would be the steps to go into your either your RSP or TFSA, whichever that sort of thing would be? Uh, that would be something I would I would be uh, interested in talking about. Great. I think I think right now is actually a great time towards the end of December. You start to do the planning, your tax planning for 2021, maybe talking to your uh, tax advisor, your accountant, your bookkeeper to start looking at the different strategies that you might use for RSP contributions, uh, for ways to perhaps perhaps have an investment plan for 2021. And uh, really, this is about continuous learning. This is not about study it once and you think you know it all. That's what's beautiful no. in the markets. That there's plenty yeah. to learn and we'll uh, look to answer those questions. Anyone who might be seeing this and you've got a question specifically about any stock, particularly about any type of investment plans, uh, questions are more than welcome. We'll look to address them in future editions of uh, Canada Startup. And Bill, that's a great question that we'll, we'll look to table in the sessions ahead to find out some good one, two, three steps to take uh, your financial fitness to the next level. Awesome. Excellent. With that, uh, I wish you very best. Thank you so much. I think this is probably going to be our session before the, the Christmas holiday. So uh, wishing everybody a, a merry Christmas, a safe Christmas, and uh, a joyful time for uh, you and your family. Thanks, Dave. And Merry Christmas to everybody. And Merry Christmas to you, Dave. So, thanks thanks again. All right.